Hey, good morning, it's Labor Day. I don't know what that means, so let's talk about uh, work history in relation to creative output. Yeah, like the jobs that I have and what the impact those jobs had on creative output. What do you think? Good morning. Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Talking about creative work, artwork, as I'm trying to transition. Hey, good morning on your left here. I know. I'm trying to transition from a professional of sorts to a professional of other sorts. <laughs> but it's trying to work more art back into my life. I really don't know anything. I'm just a dude on a bicycle trying to evolve as a filmmaker, poet, and human being. Hey, good morning. I'm grateful to be on the ride with you this morning. How's your ride going this weekend? Hey, coming around your right. There's no one up there. <laughs> on Veterans Parkway, and now that we're down here on the trail, there's all kinds of people enjoying the quietude of a holiday weekend. Like I said, I don't know what Labor Day is all about, other than a Monday in late summer. Are we late summer yet? We must be late summer yet. So, since it is Labor Day, I thought it might be fun as we talk with one another about work, work versus jobs versus the art life. Hey, good morning. <clears throat> Thought it'd be fun to kind of go through some of the early jobs that I had. Talk about how these helped or got in the way of creative and artistic output. So just kind of my creative development through work history. Wow, there's a lot of people parked here. I wonder if the balloon event is still going on. I don't see any balloons, but it's kind of late. I like to get up there early. Anyway, so back in Arkansas in the early days, of course, as a junior high kid, I was a lawn boy. I had this one job once with a lady, I think. She just wanted me to fix her mower for her. She had a riding mower that she insisted that I have to use. But like every time I used it, I had to replace the spark plugs or replace the belts on it, the like blade belt. I had to replace the, the blades. Man, I don't remember her name. That was a painful, painful job. Hey, on your left here. But then my first like real job, like I had to fill out paperwork with the IRS and such. That was a job as a line cook at a Dairy Queen. In fact, the building was so new that me and a couple of my buddies that were working there, we were all in shop class together. And so they hired us to come in a little early, help finish installing the booths and such. I thought that was kind of fun. Got to do a little construction work there. That went on one summer. Uh, the parents, I think this was a good idea, thanks parents, said uh, no working during the school year. You know, I was, it was this was the summer after 10th grade that I think, it was summer before, the summer after 10th grade that I took the job at Dairy Queen. Yeah, the, it, it's fun going back through your work history, trying to figure out the dates. So then uh, the next summer I took on a job at a grocery. It was one called Phillips Grocery, downtown Bentonville, Arkansas. And the uh, interesting thing about this... Hey, good morning on your left. Was that it was uh, owned by the people that owned Food for Less at the time. So it ended up becoming Food for Less. It ended up becoming Walmart. I think it actually is a parking lot now. They've uh, redone everything downtown Bentonville there. 
but I did that. That was a fun job. I remember when they let me work my way up to being a stock boy, you know, that was so cool. Getting to put cans on a shelf. Way better than having to walk groceries out in the heat. It was a summer in Arkansas, that's for sure. Hey, on your left here. Wow, there's so many people out. This is crazy, I didn't expect that. So then my senior year, I worked as a drug delivery person. <laughs> Not like a mule, come on. No, I worked as a drug delivery person for a drug store downtown. The dude was a grumpy old guy. Um, but the thing is, he always made sure that his people that were getting the prescriptions that he would send were taken care of. And when I'd go to the, uh, the nursing home downtown there, he would always tell me, he said, if you're back before half an hour, you didn't spend enough time with these people. So I really appreciated that. Thought the dude was awfully cool to, to bring that about. Bring that up, bring that about, to make me do that. Uh-oh, another one, one-handed wall ride. This is so silly. Woo. Hey, good morning. There must be a race. I bet we're gonna hit a race once we get down to the park. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning on your left here. We're gonna have to speed up here, folks. So then, <laughs> I don't remember if it was the summer, right out of college or the summer before, worked at a daycare. That was basically a jungle gem for young people. <laughs> um, then when I started college, I got a student worker job in the kitchen at John Brown University. Blind cook again kind of thing, kitchen prep. And then eventually, I don't know how I fell into it, started working at a, it was a used furniture store flower shop. Eventually they taught me how to do some flower arranging there. I didn't do a whole lot of that there. That was a weird job, not gonna talk anymore about it. But I learned that uh, you can use a brown magic marker to refinish a scratch on a piece of old furniture and you can't tell the difference. Um, <laughs> also, this was in college. I was like the custodian, like the live-in, on-premise custodian and kind of handyman for, um, I guess it was like a, uh, hey, good morning, on your left here. I guess it was like the uh, Methodist church on campus and uh, lived in there. Had a couple friends that did the same thing. We all did it at different times though. Basically, uh, you know, prep, prep the church for events, sleep there, keep it clean. Um, it was a pretty easy place to get into, so I think I was there for security too, which was kind of funny. And then one summer, I'd planned to work at the flower shop. They decided they didn't need me, like, in the summer. So I went over to, uh, so I was the summer I was living in the church and I worked as a roofer for a family. The Gales, some of my favorite people ever. Holly is one of the first real adult mentors I had as someone who I respected as an artist and as a human. Mostly because in Arkansas, I didn't have a lot of access to a lot of people and uh, she was very accessible. Thank you, Holly, for everything that you taught me and showing me that it's possible to have creative work. I forgot, one summer I moved to uh, Hot Springs with Raymond. He and I lived in a place called Gary's Apartments across from a horse racing track. That was a crappy, crappy place to live. We never even went to one side of the room. It was so dark, you couldn't even put light over there. It was like the entrance to hell or something. It just sucked light. <clears throat> But then I got a job at the university. This is still when I was in college as a music major. As a music library clerk, that basically meant that I sat in the, in the music library where they kept all the recordings and scores. And that was fantastic because no one ever came up there. And so that's where I really learned to listen to music for the first time. And I changed my whole, whole scope on like performance practice and um, uh, music history and theory and how they relate to one another. Oh my gosh, we're already in the park. We've got so many jobs to go through. <clears throat> it's also one winter during that time. I was a grave digger. You know, just one of those kind of seasonal jobs. Actually, <clears throat> excuse me, there was, a, there was an old dude that had a backhoe. And uh, he, uh, 
Wow, there's so many people out this morning. It's so exciting. <clears throat> and he'd dig the hole, and then I'd jump in the hole and like clean it up and make it look pretty. That's right. You want your grave site to look pretty. And you want the mound to look nice. That was the thing, the pile of dirt, that had to look nice. It had to be even. There's some thought that went into that. First uh, introduction to design right there. <clears throat> hey, good morning. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then one summer I worked at the university as a painter, painted the girls' dorms. That sucked. <laughs> I just basically laid on my side the whole summer painting floor trim. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then I was a laborer for a while. I guess that's what you'd call it. Low man I'm on the totem pole working for a general contractor. He was an alcoholic. I spent a few weeks blowing insulation in attics without even a dust mask. That was so ridiculous. I didn't know that you had to bring your own tools. Nobody told me that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and then somewhere in there, another summer... I took on a job as like a custodian at the Walmart. There was a new Walmart store built in Bentonville. The, was it the first superstore? I don't remember. <clears throat> I did that and I was also, <laughs> I put in my notes here that I was a landscaping servant. This guy, he was, he was 84 and so he needed just some help getting some things done around his place that he was either uninterested in doing himself or was, you know, he was kind of aged out of it. And uh, he was a grumpy, grumpy good dude. But it was like four hours every morning. I learned a lot about landscaping there. <laughs> Mostly how not to do things. It doesn't have to be painful. It can be a lot of fun. And then I graduated college. I was married at this time. I was also in a band, but we weren't making any money. Uh, got a job with a friend, and I was a masonry laborer. That's the guy that mixes the concrete and piles the bricks so that everyone can uh, get to them. And uh, that, was a, that was an interesting job. It was actually a really good job. Luke was really good to me. Luke, man, if you're listening, thank you, brother. Um, and then kind of fall came in. I, was, I did that for like, I guess about nine months. And then I was a line cook again at a restaurant called Stobie's. It was in a train car there in uh, Russellville, Arkansas. It was kind of fun. <clears throat> It was kind of the cool place to, uh, to go for college students. So that was a lot of fun. There was always a lot of good energy, a lot of great energy in the kitchen there. Um, that was the uh, typical kind of kitchen jokes that you get, but it wasn't like a totally misogynistic kind of place. The, the people that ran the place were really good people. So I really, really enjoyed that. That was a great, great food service experience. <clears throat> then I moved out to California the first job I got was newspaper delivery. Delivered the San Francisco Chronicle in Calistoga, parts of St. Helena. I did that for about four months uh, before I found a job as a florist at a place called Tesoro. I don't think it's there anymore. I think, I think the dude that ran it um, ended up, he decided that uh, he wanted to be a realtor. But that was really cool. They let me do like the big restaurant arrangements. So I got to do a lot of floral work there by the end. Well, a lot of deliveries too, but it was fun cruising around Napa Valley delivering flowers to people. Oh, I forgot, before that, I was a busboy at a big restaurant up there for about three weeks. They told me I didn't walk fast enough, so I told them it'll take me a while to leave today and <laughs> see ya. <laughs> um, actually, I remember one time I was riding my motorcycle up to, uh, up to work and I bought the cheapest black pants that I could. They were polyester. <laughs> and they hit one of my exhaust pipes and they totally melted. It was so embarrassing. So I had to call in and tell them I was gonna be late that day. That was kind of funny. So then I get my first professional position. This was at the Napa Valley Symphony. I was the box office manager and um, kind of administrative assistant. I ended up creating my first database there. Started in Fox Pro and then ended up doing it in Access. And that's what, kind of what got me interested in database work early on. But that was a cool job. Also about this time I was, uh, I was on the board and I was president for the uh, Napa Valley Corral, which was kind of interesting because, hey, good morning. 
I was really, really interested in arts administration at this point because I love the people that I work with. Jan and Tom were so good to me. It was just the three of us, uh, pretty much. And then we hired Ernie as a development director eventually. Um, but that was a great times, man. I loved that. So this is the finally, I've I, I've got I went through a divorce, and uh, I was working here. I was barely making enough money to pay rent. So like literally the last couple of days of any pay cycle, I was eating very, very little. <laughs> it was super fun because I was writing a lot of poetry at this time. I was writing a lot of music. Um, and I got a job as a music director at a church with the junior high and high school group. And um, because a lot of the boys' voices hadn't changed, I, I don't like it when like, you know, you, the fallback is, oh, we'll just let them sing alto. It's like, well, for one, the alto line's generally the hardest line to learn how to sing. And two, they don't want to sing a girl's part. So I rewrote a lot of the music um, that we were singing. You know, I'd take real music and just rearrange it, basically, so that the guys were singing guys' parts. That was a lot of fun. Um, we had a concert up at this monastery there in the Napa Valley, and the music was so gorgeous. And uh, that was really one of the, my highlight job moments where I was doing creative work that I loved, artistic work that I loved, and I was getting paid for it, and I really loved that. <clears throat> I was also in a band at the time and getting paid to do some stuff uh, for that. So that was kind of cool. About a third of my income at, around this time was from music, which was like, the, it's the first time that I realized, it's like, oh my gosh, I can actually make money as a musician. I never thought about that as a music major. And I didn't know that I could like work in arts administration and like part of, you know, the mechanics of getting people on stage was awfully cool to learn about. <clears throat> So uh, to make up the difference, <laughs> the last few days of the month, I, uh, and to pay off a credit card, I became an overnight watchman for like, it, what was it, three or four 10 hour shifts. I think it was only three because they, I didn't get in insurance or anything through them. <clears throat> but it was basically at a, it was run by the county. I don't remember what it was called, but basically it was, um, it was kids that they could go to this program instead of going to jail um, for like minor drug offenses. And basically I was the guy that if someone ran away, I'd call the sheriff's department and say, you know, so-and-so ran away. Yeah, we're going a little bit different route today. This is taking me a lot longer to get through all these jobs than I thought it would. Um, so then at this point, my boss at the Symphony, Tom, came in one day and he said, you don't work here anymore. You work at the San Francisco Opera now. He had talked to the box office manager there, who they were good friends. Tom had worked at the opera for years. And he basically got me a job down there at the San Francisco Opera. So no more Napa Symphony. <clears throat> Tom, thank you so much, man. That uh, changed my life tremendously, obviously. Sorry for all the coughing, folks. I'm, uh, I don't know what's going on with that. But I worked for the... Uh, opera for a few months and then um, Ernie who was the development director at the Napa Symphony his partner Rob Rob Bob he called and said hey you want to come work at the management center and they're a nonprofit support organization so basically a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits do their work um, and they had a nonprofit um, newsletter or newspaper basically of um, jobs so jobs all over the country they published this, I think it was every two weeks, called Opportunity Knox. Super cool publication, cool organization. I got to uh, like be part of executive director retreats, fundraising retreats, um, help do the logistics for a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, um, and then <laughs> Craigslist came along and they were doing nonprofit ads for free and we were doing them for $80 for every month. And uh, we started losing a little bit of business and about this time, had a motorcycle accident going home one night. I didn't have an accident. A woman ran into a brick, into the concrete divider in front of me and I hit her car. <clears throat> but it broke my collarbone and so I was laying on the floor of my apartment for a few days and I was like, I think I'm gonna take a class in HTML and JavaScript and Perl, CGI. And so I did and what's funny is I learned about this because a buddy of mine that I worked with at the management center was a buto dancer, uh, you know, like the Japanese kind of contemporary or modern, contemporary, contemporary Japanese dance. And he was a buto dancer and he'd paint himself white and dance naked. 
to weird music, and I dug it, man. I thought it was so cool. I mean, not seeing coworkers naked, that was kind of weird, but it was for art, so easy. Um, at this time, I was applying to get into the San Francisco Conservatory of, no, yeah, San Francisco Conservatory of Music. They decided my piano skills were less than what they required, <laughs> which they really were. Um, and I got into San Francisco State, but I didn't end up starting that. Um, so again, this is a really, really creative time in my life. And, you know, I'm surrounded by the arts, which is really, really fantastic. We're going to have a great little parking lot tour at this point, folks. If you're watching the video, if you're listening, it's going to sound normal. <laughs> so then, um, then I started my own web design and development company. Uh, about six months after taking those classes, um, the management center was um, having financial problems, so they were going to be getting rid of folks. They had to get rid of like a lot of the IT folks, and I really got on with them. So I started my own web design and development company. I built a lot of content management systems, so like basically like WordPress type websites um, back before WordPress existed. So I built I built several of those, and then. Uh, and then I wasn't clever enough to like say, why don't you just sell this as a thing? I mean, I was just, I was too dumb as a business person. So to supplement my income, I, uh, I, I hired on with a temp agency and I got to work in the marketing department of the doctor's company, which is a doctor's reinsurance company. So like the people that doctors get insurance from, get insurance from. <laughs> I remember going through the actuary. I shouldn't say this. I'm going to say it because I don't care. I remember going through the actuary department once and, he's, and, and overhearing uh, one of the account managers saying, so you weren't on cocaine while you were doing the surgery, were you? <laughs> oh man, actual thing happened many, many years ago. I'm sure that, thing does, that kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. Um, but then I also got to work at a, a winery, got to work at Sterling Winery there in the Napa Valley. That's the one where the, you ride the gondola up to the top of the hill to the tasting room and people come and serve you wine. It was such a cool experience. Um, so these were kind of two temp jobs. I also got a temp job in at the library, uh, like shelving books and uh, like working in the circulation department, receiving books, um, you know, like scanning them in when people turned in the books. That was kind of a fun job, weird group of people. Sorry folks, that was a weird group of people. But about this time, I was writing a lot more poetry than I was music. I think, I think the whole graduate school thing kind of bummed me out some. And so I wasn't as uh, stoked on the music or I kind of doubted myself. I mean, the bottom line is I kind of knew the extent of what I would do as a musician without a lot, a lot of help. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to get a lot, a lot of help. I was singing in a group. Um, we were actually making a couple of bucks, Aurora Voce. We did a lot of really old music, like pre-Renaissance stuff. Baroque even, uh, but like, it was pretty much like Bach was about the most contemporary thing that we did. No, that's not true, because we did that modern concert too with that um, uh, Ricky Ian Gordon piece called Water Music, which was fantastic. And also um, the Maison piece, which I am so grateful as a vocalist to have gotten to perform that, man. Uh, gosh, what was that? The Maison piece. I don't remember what the Maison piece is called. Sorry, folks. That's the way it is. Don't remember what it was called. Um, but we were making a couple of bucks doing that, too. Singing all over um, San Francisco Bay Area and uh, the coast on the uh, Mendocino Coast area. Yeah, it was so cool. That was a cool gig, man. I liked, I liked the people, too. That was really fun. Um, so let's see, then I, um, so then I ended up, they told me, hey, you know, we like your, your attitude at the library. Hey, come work for us full time. And I was about 30 years old and, and it hit me. Actually, it was, I was 32. I was walking behind the library one day and it hit me. It's like, Jeff, you've always wanted to be a writer and musician. Why don't you go to graduate school finally? And uh, so I started working on poetry. I took a class over at UC Berkeley. Um, poetry class. I also took a database class over there. You're right. I'd forgotten about that too. Took a database class over there. That was a lot of fun. Realized I was pretty clever with the database stuff. Um, I should have, <laughs> I should have done that professionally. I could have made some money. Um, but they didn't support the creative work and they, I, it wouldn't have been working with the same kind of creative people, um, that, you know, I'm getting to work with now. Oh, they're still working on the roof, so we can't go over there. We're going to try something a little new today. 
for the video. So if you're watching the video, I think I'm going to try to get the, the GoPro off my, my body and we'll go into the office here and uh, finish up the podcast inside. What do you think of that? Isn't that crazy? Ooh, yeah, that is crazy. Escape that, won't we? Shouldn't have shown you the code that I used to get into the the trailer. Yeah, so this is the trailer. I don't usually bring my bicycle in, but they're working on the roof, so I figure. We'll handle that. All right, so let's see here, just a second. lights on. Can't take the backpack off because the microphone is connected to the backpack. So let's see. <clears throat> so then we moved to Anchorage, Alaska, and I quit the library work. I got into graduate school, by the way, and I worked at Tidal Wave Books um, as a bookseller. That was really cool. I did that from like August through January. And then I got a job as a database kind of person for publications at the University of Alaska Anchorage. So I was working in the registrar's office, working on the schedules. So that was kind of fun. It was um, design work mixed with database work. So like we used all these, anyway, who cares? Worked in the registrar's office there. That was cool. And then I ended up getting to work with someone that I worked with at Tidal Wave. I really, really liked working with her, Kristen. And she ended up being the in charge of the marketing and PR aspect of the university, which was super cool. Um, so I ended up getting to work with her at Tidal Wave um, a little bit. She did the events and I, I requested, it's like, man, anytime there's an event, I want to work with Kristen because I really dig working with Kristen. So she kind of returned the favor um, there in Anchorage and at UAA and said, hey, we've got a position, electronic media specialist. So I did that um, for about a year and a half and kind of said, you know, we got to the point, it's like, okay, we've got all the basics down, but like, we need to like strategize because there's like this thing called YouTube, there's this thing called Facebook, and how do we integrate these with our web presence? I met um, Jim over in the IT department, and he and I became friends and work friends worked really, really well together. And um, so I was very grateful to have met Jim. So Jim, if you're listening, brother, good to see you. Um, hope you're doing well over there in your position, your fun position. Um, I guess I can't talk about it. I haven't asked him about it. Um, he's got a cool new position though in the Seattle area. Uh, so then I did that, and at this point, I had a career. You know, I became this career person. I was in charge of the website up there, and I was I was in graduate school, so I was studying poetry. But it was it was such um, it was such a crappy effort. I mean, it was not. I was not. Um, I wasn't giving it 100% because my job was getting, I mean, that was like a 60 hour a week job and that was getting a lot of energy. And then of course, hanging out with Jennifer, um, there were a ton of great breweries up there that you had to, to attend to. And then there was a lot of skiing. So anyway, I kind of lost it. And so when we moved to um, Idaho, I decided that's, and you guys have heard this story. I decided I'm not gonna take these big strategic positions where I'm working with or having to manage people or anything like that. I want to be a specialist again. I want to get back to doing the creative work so that in my daily life, I can, I mean in my real life, I can also get back to doing creative work. And so that's where we are today. That's how this podcast got here. This seems really long. I'm sorry. Not really because this is how long it took me to get here. Not today, but like today. You know, the big ride. What's your ride like? What are some of your favorite jobs? What are some of the favorite, your most favorite jobs you've ever had, your favoriteest jobs ever. Um, it's kind of fun thinking about these jobs. I hadn't thought about some of these jobs in a long time. Obviously, I remembered a couple even as we were coming down the trail. Um, but I really appreciate almost every one of them. There's only been a couple that really sucked. Um, and I'm really grateful for where, I'm, where I am right now that I, again, I'm in a place where I'm, I have a creative position at work. I work in a creative department, so to speak, uh, where communications, where solving communication issues um, creatively, hopefully, 
and um, coming up with new ways to express what we do here in IT. So I'm really grateful for that. And also, I'm grateful that it allows me, it, it dovetails with the, the filmmaking work that I'm doing. So I'm in a good place right now. Thank you, Labor Day. Still don't know what Labor Day is. But that's the labor that I have put in over the last 25-ish years, 35-ish years, 35 years. Wow. There you have it, folks. Hey. What's your ride? What's your favorite job? I'd love to hear from you. Hey, check me out on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Morning Ride Pod. I know it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Um, but please do uh, check us out there. Tell me, what is, what is your favorite job that you've had? What is your work history? What are the things that you've loved? How do your jobs correspond with your creative work? What kind of work, what kind of job inspires you creatively? What kind of job gives you energy to be creative? Um, are you in that place? Are you wrestling with that too? Like um, I was there for a while because my ego was getting in the way. We talked about this. I'm not going to go into it again. Um, but anyway, folks, thanks for letting me ride with you today. I really appreciate it. hope that you've had a very nice uh, weekend. If you get a weekend, we got to go to Talia yesterday, some of our favorite people. Appreciate them hanging out so that we can have a nice holiday weekend. That's the thing about food service. You don't get a break. You don't get a break at all. Folks, thanks for letting me ride with you today. I really appreciate it. Um, man, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Uh, no matter what your bicycle is, whatever your job is, whatever your creative work is, um, I hope that you get a chance to engage with that today in a way that makes you feel fulfilled. Um, it's the only ride we get, folks. We gotta feel the, the fulfillment. <laughs> we gotta get there. Hey, thanks, folks. See you on Thursday.